Hello and welcome to our Coach to Coach video series presented by the Pie Eaters. We get a lot of questions from rookie coaches about what stuff they should buy for their team. So we thought we'd go over that in this quick little episode. So the first thing to consider is get more nuts and screws. Um, and to do that, you need to know what size your nuts and screws are so that everything's compatible. We use the Tetrix kit and it uses number 632 screws and nuts. So that's basically the diameter and the thread count of the screw or nut. Some of the other kits might use M3. That's a metric screw and nut, so you'd need to get everything sized for M3. So figure out what size you have. Is it 632 or an M3? It's probably one of those. And that's the kind of stuff you're going to want to look for. The first thing you'd want to look for is the nuts. On the left side there, you can see the locking nut that comes with the Tetrix kit, which is what we use. That's a number 632 nut. If you have those, I would suggest just put them in a little Ziploc bag, put them away and never look at them again, uh, and get these ones on the right. They're called nylock nuts, and you can tell the difference by the little insert. If you look closely, there's a little nylon insert in there, and that will lock the nut onto the screw when you attach it. If you use the nuts over on the left, the locking nuts, the vibration on the robot, they w those nuts will shake loose and things will start falling apart on you. And so just get rid of those if you if you have those. If you already have nylocks, great. I would suggest you get more. You can't have too many nylocks. And again, these are number 632. If you're using M3, there are also M3 nylocks. We found a great place to buy more nylocks is out at Servo City. They have the uh, number 632s. You can see it up there in the description. Uh, it comes in a pack of 25 for $1.59 when we made this video. I would suggest maybe get 100, you know, get four packs. I don't think you're ever going to be telling yourself, man, I have way too many nylocks laying around. It'll be the opposite. Out on Servo City, you can see here there's 632 socket head machine screw pack. They have 25 in a pack there. And over on the right, you can see all the different lengths you can get them in. So, you know, figure out what lengths you might find valuable and get a pack of 25 of each of those different lengths. Again, I don't think everyone have a bunch of short ones laying around and go, why do we have so many short ones? it's more likely you're going to be like, why don't we have more of the this size? So go ahead and stock up on those uh, machine screws. I think you'll be glad you did. And like I mentioned, Servo City has the number 632s. If you go over to Rev Robotics, you can see here they have the M3 nylock nuts in 100 packs. They'll also have the M3 screws as well. Or you can find them somewhere else. Just know that you want nylock nuts and machine screws in the right size. And for any of your connections that don't use a nut, you'll run into the same problem where the screws can back out. So here you see a set screw, um, and that might go into a wheel hub or motor hub or something, or maybe you've tapped something and you screw a screw into that tap and there's not a nylock nut there to grab into. You'll wanna use something like this Loctite here. You just put a little dab on the screw and then you can screw it into place. So when you go to buy this at your hardware store or online or whatever, um, look for the blue version down. You can see on the left, blue 242. That's the one you want. You don't want the red. They look very similar. But the blue is intended to lock your screw in place, and then you can actually remove the screw if you need to, whereas the red is intended to glue that screw into place, and it should never come out again. So make sure you get the blue Loctite. One thing worth mentioning with Loctite is that there are certain plastics that if you get the wet Loctite on, it will degrade the plastic and possibly break. So like if you put the Loctite on a screw and then stick it through a wheel and it, the wet Loctite gets on the wheel, it could eat away some of the plastic on that wheel and cause it to break later. So just be really careful when you're using the Loctite to try not to get the wet Loctite on the plastic. So maybe you stick the screw through first, then put the dab of Loctite on and then tighten it in place. All right, let's talk about motors. If you're a new team, you probably need more motors. So check your game manual part one, figure out which motors are legal and which ones might work best for you. Um, here on the left is the Tetrix motor that comes with the kit. These are known a little bit for, um, if you stall them, they will burn out. Whereas maybe the one on the right, the Andy Mark motor, that's the Never Rest motor, it's maybe a little more robust. Also the Never Rest motor on the right, it's a little longer, but it comes with an encoder built in. If you need encoders, the Tetrix motor, it's smaller and takes up less space, but it does not come with an encoder built in. You'll have to buy an extra encoder if you need an encoder for that motor. So this is from the Andy Mark website. You can see the NeverRest uh, 40 gear motor. It's $28 out there. You can get that in a 20 gear motor, 40 gear motor, or 60 gear motor. 
And the good news is if you decide you want to change out the gearbox, you could pull that 40 gearbox off and put a 20 gearbox on there or a 60. Um, it's pretty easy to do. This never rest motor seems to be very popular for FTC teams. Now, Rev Robotics has some nice motors coming out that have been legalized for this year's game in the first relic recovery season. If you're watching this later, you know, check the game manual, see what's legal and check those motors out and see which ones you might want. But you'll probably want more motors. And the same thing applies to batteries. You're probably going to want more batteries. I'd say you want at least three. Um, we have five because on competition day, you're going to be rotating those batteries through. You don't want to run out of battery power. So you want at least three, maybe five batteries, maybe grab an extra battery charger so that you can be charging two batteries at once as you're cycling through on competition days. And again, check the game manual to see which batteries are legal. There's only a few that are legal. I know Tetrix makes one, Rev Robotics makes one, and there's a couple others. So check your game manual, figure out which batteries are legal. And of course, you want it to match whatever batteries you already have, so you can just change them out at will on your robot. And last, we'll talk a little bit about wheels. Um, your kit probably came with wheels, but here, let me jump out of this into the internet. All right, and here we are. This is the Tetrix website. You can see they have these, um, these are the ones that come with the kit. They also have these Tetrix Max all-terrain tires. Those were very popular um, a couple years back. And you'll probably want some Omni wheels. Um, these are four inch wheels. That's a pretty standard size. They make smaller ones and bigger ones. Um, you can also go out to Rev Robotics. They have their own version of Omni wheels out at their website. And also Andy Mark, which we talked about with the motors, has these stealth wheels and they're really great. Um, you can get those in different size, uh, the set the two inches right now, we add a dollar to get a four inch. Um, we also have to pick our bore size. So if you look over at these guys, that guy has a round hole straight through the middle, whereas these ones in the back have a hex hole in them. That's the bore. It depends on what kind of axle you're using. Um, most kits I think are still coming with standard D bore axles or round axles. So you might want to go with these, um, round axles, which would be the eight millimeter size. You just, anything that's not hex would work for you because it has the uh, pattern there for a hub and then this last thing in the stealth wheels which is interesting is how grippy is it um, up here at the top the gray grip is the it's the least grippy of these stealth wheels but it has a longer life it doesn't wear out as quick and you can go all the way down to the most grippy um, but it's going to wear out a lot quicker because they're so soft so we went with the blue 50 a's last year they worked great we did have to change them out um, kind of near the end of the season we changed them out because they were getting really worn out and obviously the softer the wheel you have you don't necessarily want to be driving on anything except the tiles so depending on what the game is you you might want to look at these stealth wheels as an option so it's always nice to have some different option for wheels and have some backups in case something goes wrong with your wheels and you heard me mention these four websites. If you're set up on these websites, chances are you can get most of the things you're going to need. You have Tetrix Robotics, Rev Robotics, Andy Mark, and Servo City. Those are four of the mainstays for First Tech Challenge. I think you'll find most of what you need there. And that's our coach to coach on what to buy. Maybe we'll come up with another one on some other things you might want to buy. But for now, that's it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down in the comments section and we'll try to get back to you. Good luck this season.